So David Einhorn said recently that higher rates are actually stimulative. Um, you know, people have higher incomes and firms have lots of cash sitting on the balance sheets, uh, you know, which is resulting in an increase in interest income. So what do you think about this theory uh, generally and, and what it might mean for you know, the outlook of the economy and for risk assets? Yeah, well, I think it's a theory proposed by people who aren't doing the uh, rigorous analytical work to assess the quantities uh, of what is influenced by interest rates. Let's just take the basic simple example of just the income side uh, of the, the story. Um, in order for uh, higher interest rates to influence economic activity, that income growth, that income earned, has to translate into GDP impact. Most of the debt assets held by, you know, held in the US are held by non GDP creating entities, pension funds, endowments, foreign central banks, right? Businesses for whom their primary reason for operating or the primary business decisions are related to, you know, macroeconomic or uh, cyclical circumstance, not related to the amount of income that they're earning on their bank deposits. And so, the first most important point is that there's a lot of talk about all this income, but you know, with with very little care to understanding that connection, quantifying that connection to actual GDP effect. And even those like households who have a GDP effect, those who are earning that income, you know, what do the rich people do when they earn the income on their T-bills? You know, does that meaningfully affect their spending? Uh, the answer is no. Right, because their propensity to spend versus save is very different from those who would likely spend from higher wages. And so you put that all together, just on on its face, the idea that it's a meaningful driver of spending doesn't hold up to the common sense test. Now, let me also say that you have to weigh higher interest rates against the negative effects that higher interest rates have on the economy related to increased borrowing, uh, which clearly there's a very direct impact on increased borrowing. Just look at bank bank balance sheets and how much borrowing has slowed since interest rates have risen. And also the effect on asset prices, the incremental effect on asset prices, where higher interest rates you know, bring down or a negative impact on asset prices on the margin. And you put that all together and basically anyone, there's no way to make a quantitatively driven case that's based upon, you know, fundamental uh, factors where this idea holds any water. It's not even close, right? It's not close. Um, and I think, you know, often these things are sort of vaguely proposed by, you know, disconnected, uh, uh, you know, folks who are sort of, you know, out there kind of professing general ideas rather than people who are literally doing the work to quantify whether or not um, it makes sense, right? So stay away from disconnected luminaries, like oh, like vaguely speculating, and focus on people who are adding up the numbers and doing the the quanti quantification necessary to make the assessments. Right. So we'll finish off, I think, with two questions related. I have to nothing against kind of... David. I I don't even know David <laughs> Einhorn from anybody. I'm just saying that's a very popular theory that's right. out there. That just doesn't hold water if you do the work to really understand it. Mm -hmm.